This short recording will show how to set up the basics of enterprise, including setting up rights management and then setting up users. Once you've upgraded to the enterprise system, you'll click on the settings gear and the first step will be to set up your rights management profiles. We offer four different profiles and you can set these up in any way that you choose. The first profile is admin, then reviewer, then data entry, and then custom user. You can set these up again any way that you choose. If I want someone to have exactly the same permissions as the owner of the account, I can tell I'm the owner of the account because I have enterprise next to my account type. I could set up admin with all of the rights selected. And you can see that selects everything except for the ad notices, which is an additional feature. For the reviewer, that's typically going to be set up so that they can uh, view and or create, possibly delete payers. Uh, doing the same with recipients, probably not interacting with the users as much. Potentially using the TIN masking features, whether that's being able to view the TIN after it's been masked or check the TIN matching. They may be able to import data and create forms. Notice when I click the forms option, it turns all of the selections under forms on, but if I deselect one of those options, it deselects the forms button here, just because these selections go with the forms entry here. For this person, they are a reviewer, so I want them to be able to review, approve, and reject the forms. I may have them be able to submit other forms for someone else to review as well, or I could have them submit to e-file. Just depends on how my structure is within the organization that I'm working with. Similarly, for the data entry user, they may be a much more limited user, so they may be able to create payers. Maybe they can't delete anything there, though. Same with recipients. They may not be able to delete the recipients. Probably can't interact with the users at all. For the 10, I may not want them to do a 10 check. I may not want them to see 10s once they're entered into the system, so I may take off all of those 10 options there. Might not want them to request W9s or W8s. Uh, they should probably be able to import data and create forms. I don't want them to be able to review and approve or reject forms. Uh, may not want them to submit to e-file because I want them instead to submit them for review. So they go to this person, the reviewer over here. So these will work however you choose uh, based on the options that you select. And the options are listed over here on the left for each one of the uh, checkboxes that you see here. A couple of more things to note here. I can allow members to use the prepay balance of the administrator. So the payments are from top down. If I, as the account owner, enter a prepay balance, I can have that apply to all of my other users for the ability to pay as long as they have payments selected at the bottom of the screen here. Similarly, if I don't select that option, then each of my users would enter their own payments, whether that's through a credit card or through a prepay balance on their own account. But all of the funds in the account go from the top level user down to other users. So setting up the rights is very flexible. You can set it up however you choose. And then once you go to the next step, which we'll see in a moment, you would select one of these profiles to go with the users. Let's go to that next step for setting up the member users now. So back under settings, I'm gonna click member user. I already have several who are set up, but just to show how this works, I'm gonna click add user. You put in the first name and last name of the user. You put in the email address of the user. Has to be a unique email address inside tax1099.com, so this person can't have another account somewhere. And then I'm going to assign the rights as to how I want this person to use the system. So these are the profiles we just saw. If I click Reviewer, you can see it changes the options that are selected here. If I collect, select Data Entry, you can see it changes the options to what I've selected here. Custom User, I don't have very many things selected there. So you can see I have a very limited case for this person. They're really just kind of working on an administrative capacity to create, edit, delete, and view users. But those are up to you to determine how you want to set those profiles up. One advantage is within the profile itself, if I have a user who maybe is, uh, is not as experienced, even after applying the profile, I can limit that user down. I may not want them to 
um, edit any of the forms that they are payers or recipients that they're creating. You may not want them to delete or edit. Uh, on the form side, I may want them just to submit for review, not be able to submit to for e-file. Um, maybe they can print, email, postal mail, uh, but just kind of, again, depending on your circumstances, you'll be able to set that user up however you want to. So you apply the profile and then you can edit the profile for this individual user so that they have specific rights that you may want them to have that other users of this type may not have. The next piece here is the assigned payers. You'll see it says optional there. If I do not assign any payers to this member user, then this person won't be able to see any of the existing companies that I may have already created inside of Tax 1099. They'll only be able to see payers that they add themselves. I have options here. I can choose just a few of these. If I want them to go in and uh, be able to see these three companies, then I can add those to the profile. I can search for payers so that I only see um, the ones that I want to see. So I could search for particular payers there and only see those payers. And then also I could add all the existing payers and any payers that are added later. This is for a user who you want to be able to access all of the payers that are in the system now and then potentially any other payers that you create later on. So you would be able to do that by checking this box at the top. I'm not going to create this user. As I mentioned, I've got several that are created already. I want to talk about these other buttons that you have here. So I have a data entry user. I can edit using the pencil icon. I can go in and I can make changes to this person's access. I can change who they're assigned uh, to work with in terms of my clients, my payers. I can also deactivate a user. So this button here is a deactivate user option. You can see that there's also a delete option. If you delete a user or if you deactivate a user, then you'll be asked to assign the payers that this person has created or has assigned to them to another one of the member users, and the system will guide you through that process. I can also see that I've created a user here who hasn't accepted their invitation. If that's the situation, you can re-request that invitation to be sent out. Just make sure that your email server is set up to receive emails from tax1099.com. And that's the basics for setting up your tool for enterprise.